You're about to watch our midweek leadership talk with Cowboy Junction Church. We hope that you're encouraged as you listen to this to grow and become a limitless leader in a world full of limits. Hey, I want to thank you guys for, for coming again. Uh, have you enjoyed these? Yes. Yeah. It'd be awkward if you said no. <laughs> it really would. I, you know, that's one of those baited questions. You can't say no and you say yes. I've really enjoyed them. And, and let me tell you, I, I have to rise to the challenge for them. I really believe God and, and um, I don't want to waste y'all's time. I know we just came in in prayer. We had about a 15 minute corporate prayer. And to keep you guys for one more thing, it, it better be worth it. So um, I, I just want to pray. And uh, would you guys join me in prayer? Father, we love you. Speak to us. Speak to our leaders. Holy Spirit, there is nothing I have to give. Only what comes from you. So give us richly and greatly. And Lord, let us see you in, in today. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 49. Uh, Genesis chapter 49. I am a huge fan of the story of Joseph. Yeah. It is just, uh, it's worth pausing and slowing down and looking at the details. The details are amazing in the story of Joseph. But in this uh, chapter 49 of Genesis, this is the end. This is the end of Israel. Israel is passing away. This is the dad. And there's some interesting things that take place here. Um, first of all, uh, he's blessing his children. He's blessing his children. He's blessing his children. He's saying goodbye. There's some people who get a larger blessing as far as uh, Joseph receives five sentences of blessings. And then there's some sons that get one sentence of blessing. And it's just interesting to look at the details. Now remember, these are also the sons that, that pulled uh, the dirty rotten on, on Joseph. And this is this Joseph who was betrayed by his brothers. I think one of the most fascinating things that you need to look at is this is, this is Israel, the father, who had 10 sons, 10 sons. But there's 12 tribes of Israel. And that's an interesting thought. And how did it happen? Uh, it happened because uh, Israel turned to Joseph and said, you have two sons. And you were such a blessing to this family. You were such a blessing to this community. You are a walking. Of all the things that, that you've been through, you maintained your faith in God. And I'm adopting your two sons, Joseph, and pulling them into my lineage. And that's where the 12 tribes of Israel come from. And it comes from this part right here. And I'll read real quick. This is verse 22. Verse 22, it says, Joseph is a fruitful bow. A beautiful bow by a well. His branches run over the well. That, that one little, little verse there, I want to go back and read it again. We're going to read down a little bit more, but this is my content for today. Joseph is a fruitful bow, a beautiful bow by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. You remember this whole story? It's a whole story of, of the people who were closest to him betrayed him. Archers um, were the fiery darts of the enemy that just continued to shoot his way. So they shot at him and they hated him. But his bow remained in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong. I love that part. He was made strong even when he went through things that would have made him weak. By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. And from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. And he's saying from this will come Jesus. Right. Jesus will come from this lineage. By the God of our Father who will help you. And by the Almighty who will bless you. With blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that lies beneath. Blessings of the breast and of the wombs. This is, this is the blessings that will come because of your faithfulness. Because of your faithfulness. The blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. And he's, he's, this is a father turning to Joseph saying, this goes even beyond me. Uh, the blessings you will receive because of the person that you are is going to go even beyond anything I could do for your life. I mean, I, I, I brought you into this world. You're seeing me out of this world. But Joseph, let me just tell you, because of your faithfulness, because of your faithfulness, there will be a blessing that is far beyond what I can give, but it will go deep, deep 
beyond anything that I can even do for you. It says, they have excelled the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brothers. The reason why I want to talk about this today, jumps back up to verse 22. And it says, Joseph is a fruitful bow, a bow. Okay, it's not a word we use too often. It's the fruitful bow of a well. And his branches run over the well. It's this garden. Joseph is a fruitful garden. The, the ground that he is, you plant a seed and it turns into harvest. Mm. And then we have to start asking ourselves, what does the ground that would be considered us, what does our ground look like? If the seeds are deposited into our life, do they have a chance to grow? If you're put in a, a situation to where someone, someone lied about you, someone sold you, someone uh, threw you away, like, like Joseph experienced, is your soil so rich, so deep, so fertile, so tended, so dug up, so removed of the rocks that it doesn't matter where you go, if God spoke a word in your life, it will produce a harvest. Right. You could go to prison, yeah. like Joseph. Be thrown in prison where nobody knows you. And in prison, you're still gonna prosper because of, of the condition of your soil. Mm -hmm. You could know no one, you could be lonely. You could be uprooted in your home and stuck someplace else, but it doesn't matter. For the blessings of God go wherever you go. He's there, he's here, he's wherever you're at. Are we so confident in who we are in Christ Jesus that it doesn't matter who or where we're at, are, we're going to be able to produce a harvest there. there there's this moment that, that you have to think, what does he mean when he says that he's a fruitful fruit bow, a garden by a well? A well sustains people. A well draws out of. We should know what a well is here in Lee County because it doesn't rain like in other places. <laughs> it doesn't rain. So what if we had to, we, we come from a great long lineage of people that said it doesn't rain here, but there's still water here. Right. It doesn't rain here. And when all of their relatives are telling them, you're crazy for moving to southeastern New Mexico, you're crazy for going there. It's our relatives, our history that turned and said, there's water there. We may have to drill for it, we may have to learn how to use leathers and windmills, and we may have to learn how to do, we're gonna to have to learn how to do it differently, but we can make a living here. We can grow here, we can prosper here. And there's so many people that would turn to us and say, you're crazy for doing that. Yeah. I don't know how you're gonna do it. Well, I'm not gonna do it the way that you did it, because it rains where you're at, and it's green where you're at, mm -hmm. but here we gotta pull it up out of the ground, and we figured out how to do it. Yeah. And this is one of the most successful ranching communities anywhere the grass here is amazing mm -hmm. but but you have to know how to work it right mm -hmm. and the same wow, thing's good. true in leadership That's good. you can't sit back and look how another church does things and then come back and say well how come that doesn't happen here there's some things that i see some other churches do that man i like it i want to implement it we're kind of doing that right now in our leadership right here but if i come back and i try to make what works there work here and it doesn't, I think, well, God must not love me. No, it goes back to, he was a whale. Yeah. He was a whale. Yeah, that's good. He figured out how to make it work. And that's something in leadership we've got to do too. You have good soil. You are smart. You have the, the living God on your side. And, and this may sound cliche, but really there's no excuses. Right. There's always a way. And you see someone in good leadership, you see someone that says, well, I may not know how, but that just means I don't know how now. Mm. Come on, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. And it means you dig deep and you figure out that the water may not be up there, but the water may need to come from here. You know that the statistics say, uh, statistics, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, there's more water underground than there is above ground. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah, it's kind of fascinating. I'm not talking about oceans and that kind of stuff, but I'm talking about the rain versus the underground springs. Yeah. And, and there is so much treasure in you Ooh. that may not be around you. Wow. 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 Come on, so think about this. And we don't tap into the deep stuff. Yeah. There's a whole lot of quitting me. I don't know if y'all, 
if, if, if CrossFit taught me anything, it taught me that I had a whole lot of quit in me. <laughs> when you walk in the door and you haven't even worked out yet, but you can look up on the board and read what you're going to do today and you just want to quit. Oh my gosh. And, and, and let me tell you what, you, you learn in time, I, I can do this. It may take me longer than other people, but I can cross the finish line just like they cross the finish line. And I get to pay attention to what I don't have. And instead of looking at it, I just need to go deeper. I just need to get stronger. That's good. You may beat me today, but give me three months. I, I bet I can, I, I, I'm going to be a different guy in three months. Yeah. I'm going to be a different guy in three months. That's good. I'm going to be a different guy in three months. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the last things I want you to look at here is this is his branches run over the wall. This is one of the most overlooked parts, but you got to remember this is, this is Israel, his father. Turning to Joseph and saying, this is my blessing. I'm going to give you a big blessing. In fact, I just want to say thank you. Joseph, we're all here because of you. We're all here because you you reached your branches over your wall. And what that means is, is Israel's turning and saying, when we rejected you and when your brothers sold you and you went to a distant land, but God's hand was still on you and you began to prosper and you prospered because God's hand was on you and you were faithful with our father and you followed through on who you were in him. You didn't let the hurt pull you down, but you grew and all of a sudden you began to rise in favor and you began to rise in authority and you began to rise in wisdom and you began to rise in knowledge. God began to promote you and promote you and promote you. Everything that God was doing in you, you could have easily said, this is God doing it in me. And, 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 and this, is, this is me and God. This is me and God. And you had every reason in the world not to go beyond your walls. Wow. You could have stayed right where you're at. Right. But he said, this is his father turned into and said, you didn't have to then turn and bless your family mm-hmm. because your family didn't bless you. Wow. You, you did though. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. saw us coming. And we didn't know who you were, but you knew who we were. And your branches went beyond your walls. And your home was Egypt. But you went beyond Egypt and you blessed your family who didn't bless you. And you brought healing to this family that, that hurt you. And then your, wall, your, your branches went beyond Egypt and it went beyond your family. And it went clear into other nations who were going through a famine. And you reached to them and you blessed them as well. Well, he said, Joseph, you didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. And you did. Wow. And that's the test of some of the next level leadership. And it's something that I want to turn to you guys. And there's just a few of us here. But I want you to think about this. So many times they don't deserve it. So many times they, they are not the reason that um, we, I guess, we have what we have. In fact, we probably lost a little bit because they are in our life. But a real test, a blessing, is when you reach the end and someone turns around to you and says, you didn't have to bless me because the Lord knows I didn't bless you. But I want to thank you because I saw God in what you did. And you know, the New Mexico Junior College, the rodeo team, there are a bunch of college kids that just that just going to pull on everything about you. They're going to pull on you. They're going to take from you. They're going to demand from you. And there will be a day they turn around and they go, they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to give. Your branches go beyond your walls. For this church, it's not about everybody in this church. It's about us being a blessing in our community right. when they didn't do anything for us. And that's going to have a lot to do with our ministry in the year as leadership. We have got to make sure that we continue to do what we do in here. But... This is an amazing portion of scripture where Joseph turns and brings up something I think everyone should pay attention to us. The attention is, of course we want the blessing in our home. But what are we doing to be a blessing outside our walls? So good. What so are good. we doing being a blessing outside our walls? I've had more fun the last year and a half having friends that were just, just heathens. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that I turned into them. It means that I get texts in the middle of the night saying, hey, you got to help me. 
I'm, I'm struggling forgiving somebody and, and I'm, I'm texting them scripture. And I'm nervous texting them scripture because I think there's this whisper in my ear saying, you're just preaching to them. And, and, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm being a leader. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm giving them the well that I got. Mm-hmm. Listen, I gave them good advice. Good advice will only get you as far as the end of the day. But give them the word of God and it lasts forever. Come on, that's true. And, and, and I'm praying for people that have never been prayed for before. And they don't know if we should hold hands or stand there or close your <laughs> eyes or open your eyes. And it's the most awkward, most wonderful thing you've ever experienced. And it's me going over my walls. And, and that's one of the hardest things as a leader. Because when you finally get blessed, when you finally get there, when you finally have some success, you kind of want to keep everybody that could mess this thing up out. Think how he felt. Egypt is finally growing. I am second in command. And the very people who sold him start walking up. And he thought, I can't keep this to myself. So there you go.